Goose furs and pseudo hemlocks, hopefully, if we get through them all. We're going to start with some cultivars. I don't like starting with cultivars because it's kind of the back door way of introducing you to plants, but otherwise we would be running all over the place. And I'm trying to find... Now, you've noticed I've changed the format of the list. I'm trying to be really high-tech here, which is... Uh, I know, I do too. But you see, I, got, but I, but I, I didn't know how to do the old ones where I just had the name and it was light instead of that long way. Oh, I did it one year and I don't know what I did. And then I did this. But I thought this would give you at least a brief description. Yeah, that's nice. That's a nice yeah. <laughs> I could make them smaller. I can them <laughs> Anyhow, uh, looking at this guy right here, with his lovely one to lower new this is number 830, Pinus densiflora, Oculus draconis. Oculus is I. The hockey team should know what draconis is. Yeah. Right, the dragon. So Oculus draconis, so the eye of the dragon. The idea being is if you look into this evergreen, you'll see that it looks like a dragon's eye. Now, I've never really seen a dragon's eye. Uh, it's a unicorn once. <laughs> and chased by a dragon, but I never got close enough to see the dragon's eye. But if you were to look at a dragon, I'm sure it was going to look something like this. This is kind of a uh, densiflora is a Japanese pine, and uh, they're kind of on the border of hardiness here. And this is a fairly rare plant. Uh, it's becoming a little more common now because of a fellow called Paul Vandercroft, who lives in Strathroy, who actually propagates these and propagated by grass. However, uh, Paul and I once owned the only two plants in Ontario. I probably killed mine after about five years. I did I actually drove by it the other day, and it's quite big. And this is uh, progeny off that particular plant. See, it does prov uh, produce cones, which is fairly unusual on dwarf conifers. Not all of them produce the fruit. And you'll notice that the form is kind of unkempt. It's kind of a bit formless. Uh, Paul's is a little more regular in shape, uh, principally because he takes cuttings, or he takes uh, um, scions, the top stock of the ground. And so with some pruning, then it becomes really quite uh, dense. It's interesting to look at his plants, so in his garden, because uh, he's just retired. Um, and he, he's, he's maybe Evans type, so most of his evergreens in his garden are pruned up to here, and then they all go wild on the top. Collecting the pruning stock from. But this would have been one of the ones, and this came out of Jack's garden, Jack Parker's garden, when he moved places and, and uh, the people didn't want it. So, really, kind of a specimen or an accent plant, really unusual for that banding, and it's got a really neat really hand module. There is, uh, on your list, another 830. This is Pinus 